I'm standing in front of the alma mater statue with her draped owl on the steps of Lowe Library. We've seen during our tour of campus building stones that not everything in the geological past is the same as the present. Fifty years ago, when I started studying geology, there was no vestige of the beginning, but at that time, the beginning was beginning to be revealed in the cosmic microwave background. At that time, any, pre any prospect of an end was more likely to be a nuclear holocaust, as we were just after the Cuban Missile Crisis, and the Cold War loomed rather large in our short-term uh, future and perhaps the end of civilization as we know it. We've moved on a bit since then, and now it appears that we're more in danger of having an end to things that's caused by our own consumption of carbon-based fossil fuels, which are loading the atmosphere with carbon dioxide, leading to climate change and the warming of the, uh, uh, the climate to the point where it may no longer be sustainable. What you see behind me, and the reason we're having the last stop here, is that geology does point a way forward in which we might perhaps avoid this rather unseemly fate of frying ourselves in climate change or choking ourselves to death with carbon-based fossil fuel pollution. Underneath Alma Mater's uh, 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 statue is a plinth, which is a combination of green and red stone with whitish green veins across it. The stone type is serpentinite, which is caused by the hydration and carbonation of the most abundant rock in the interior of the earth, the peridotite that makes up the mantle shell, which is a very large volume of the earth's interior. What you see here are veins of carbonate, which demonstrate that if carbon dioxide is put in conjunction with peridotite, which is in the process of converting to serpentine by hydration, it will also grab and stabilize as carbonate minerals the magnesite and dolomite and calcite of the whitish-greenish veins. One of the interesting projects that's underway at Columbia is to work on the process of CO2 capture and sequestration by the means of introducing it to peridotite. Professor Klaus Lackner has been a pioneer in suggesting this as a route forward to our environmental problems. And Professor Peter Kellerman has been instrumental in suggesting a route in which carbon dioxide is introduced directly into peridotite in perhaps places like the shore of the Persian Gulf and the Oman Ophiolite where, in fact, vast tracts of this are exposed near the surface. This suggests that there might be a way forward, and notice that it's geology-based. So I encourage you to study geology by whatever means you can, whether it be observation of rocks or by studying of synthetic seismograms and so forth. It's relevant to us, it's relevant to our past, and possibly be relevant to our future and whether we in fact are able to continue it for any longer periods of time. Thanks for your attention and enjoy the rocks.